We don't like, we don't like uncertainty though. We don't like impossible. We, we only like uncertainty in our movies, right? <laughs> like that's what makes a great movie. Like we'll take, <laughs> we'll take a certain outcome and make it uncertain. Titanic. <laughs> the boat sinks. Like we know that, right? Like I'll never let go. <laughs> she let go. All right. E.T., what makes a great movie? Uncertainty. Gladiator, what makes a great movie? Uncertainty and suspense. Uncertainty and suspense don't just make great movies. They make great lives. Wow. Why? Because faith has to be a part when impossibility in enters. When uncertainty comes in, what happens? I have to rely on God. Some of you are like, why am I fighting so much right now? Here's why. Because you're better in a battle. You don't pray when there's not a battle. You don't read your devotional. You're not in the word. You're not, oh God, I need you. Whenever you're not in the battle, you're like, well, I'm good. You do whatever you want. But when a battle happens, you hit your knees. So sometimes God's got to let a little bit of impossibility creep into your life so you can realize who is God and who is not. Come on, I'm preaching good on a Sunday. I'm fired up. I got to, I got to take a break. Jesus often encountered and possibility. Matthew um, uh, chronicles a story. Mark chronicles a story uh, about a father. Uh, Matthew chapter 17, verse 14, who had a son who was dealing with a spirit. And when they knew, when they came to the crowd, Matthew 17, 14, a man approached Jesus and knelt before him. Lord, have mercy on my son. He has seizures and is suffering greatly. He often falls into the fire or into the water. <laughs> verse 16, get ready, kids. I brought him to your disciples, but they, uh, they couldn't heal him. What, what does that mean? That means they tried. He, he brought them. Like, can, you, can you help us? Yeah, we got you, bro. Come on. Come on. Come on. We got you right here. Right now. In the name of Jesus. Boom. Nothing happened. You, you ever prayed and nothing happened? Like, ah, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Nothing happened. They were acting on an authority that they did not have. I wonder how many of us are walking through a season dry as a bone, wow. declaring that God's going to do something, but not actually talking to the God who can. Wow. This is important for us to lean into. I want us to lean into this. Matthew chapter 19, verse 26, says, Jesus looked at them and said, with man, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. Now that's a powerful verse of scripture, but I want you to notice something. All you got to do is just, just read it and look at it. With man, this is impossible. So what happened? They were operating in the flesh. Wow. They weren't operating with God. And I think some of us are attacking some of the things that we're attacking in the flesh and trying to power through it and muscle through it and intellect through it and get through it with my smarts and with my studies and with my social media and with what my friends say. But at the end of the day, we have to understand I've got to be with God because with God, whatever's impossible becomes possible. So dad brings his boy to Jesus and he says, Jesus says, all things are possible to them that believe. He says, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. And now we have an intersection of faith and doubt. This is a dichotomy. Because I'm bringing it to Jesus and I need Jesus, I need Jesus to do something, but I also have doubt. This is beautiful for you and me right now, especially in an impossible situation, whatever it is you're looking at, whether it's your marriage or, or whether it's um, finances in your family, maybe sickness in your body, or as I've already mentioned, racial unrest in our community. What do we do? We have to get it to Jesus. Yes. And in spite of doubt, and I'm going to pick this up later. Let me not preach it too quick. Slow down, Foster. In spite of doubt, Jesus heals the boy which is a beautiful thing for us to understand. And later, the disciples come to Jesus. Like the Bible says, when they got, when they got away from the crowd because they were embarrassed, <laughs> they come to Jesus, Jesus, because Jesus literally said, how long am I going to be with you? Yeah. And they're like, oh, we tried. <laughs> so they go to Jesus later because some of us, the challenge is we don't have a follow-up conversation with Jesus. When something that you want to happen doesn't happen, you ought to have a follow up conversation with Jesus and don't just write it off like you somehow understood it. You ought to go and ask him. And so they did. Matthew chapter 17, verse 20. They said, Jesus, well, what happened? He said, you don't have enough faith. Jesus told them, I tell you the truth, truth. If you had faith, even as small as a mustard seed, which is kind of a slam because he was like, y'all didn't have any faith because a mustard seed is about the size of a pinhead. He said, as a mustard seed, you could say to this mountain, move from here to there and it would move. Nothing would be 
impossible. With God, all things are possible. Mark, the book of Mark expounds on this story even a bit more. Mark chapter 9, verse 29, Jesus said to them, this kind comes out, not out by nothing but prayer and fasting. What's he saying? He's saying, you guys were walking with me. You were talking with me. You were living with me. You were watching me heal people and somehow still missing the key. Listen, if you want to have faith, it takes prayer. You can't just you can't just have faith. Oh, I have faith. No, no, no. You actually pray. And when you pray, God increases your faith. There's a reason the, the disciples weren't really good at prayer. All you got to do is look at Luke chapter 11. They could have asked Jesus any question they wanted to ask Jesus. They could have asked Jesus, hey, man, how, like, hey, what am I thinking right now? <laughs> Who was my first girlfriend? They could have asked Jesus anything. Like, how old am I going to be? How many kids? They could have asked Jesus anything. Like, what's the lottery numbers? <laughs> no, okay, don't, don't stop it right now. And Jesus, unless you win, then pay your tithes. All right, um, <laughs> again, churchy people just got offended. Calm down, churchy people. They said, when they had an opportunity to ask Jesus a question, they said, Teach us to pray. Why? Because they understood that his power emanated from his wow. prayer. Oftentimes, Jesus, the Bible says, stole away to secret places to pray. So if you want to, and this is what, what I'm preaching, if you want to embrace the impossible, because that's really what you have to do. You have to embrace the impossible. And if you want to embrace the impossible, then you have to have impossible faith. 